Okay, Frank, this is a 1946 Aronka Champ. There were 10,000 built between 1945 and 1950. This airplane is very popular today. One reason it's lightweight. Cruises at 85 miles an hour, has a four cylinder, 65 horsepower Continental engine, burns four gallons an hour. That's yeah. And uh, this airplane, I've owned it three times. This airplane was brought to, to this airport in, in a basket in uh, 1970. Dr. Wood bought this airplane. So the process of rebuilding this airplane took about, uh, well, I think three or four years. What's, so a, what's a horsepower? 65. 65. Has it got a Lycoming or a uh, Continental? Continental. I, I said the, the history of uh, this airplane that I own is really quite interesting when you think about that uh, one of our local doctors, Dr. Wood, bought the airplane as a basket case. We went up to Cincinnati back in February of 1970 to, to pick it up. And I mean, there was no fabric on it. Woodwork was shot. It was just in pieces. You're talking about your airplane My now, airplane. right? Back the one yeah, we just saw. Yeah, the one we just looked yeah. at. And uh, he bought it for the purpose of having it rebuilt and restored so his teenage boys could be taught to fly. But as what happens to so many teenage boys, they're more interested in girls than they were airplanes. So he sold the airplane to uh, a fellow by the name of Henry Haig, which lived in Michigan at the time. And Henry owned the airplane and flew it for five or six years, brought it back down here and offered it to me. I said, I'm not interested in it. So he sold it to a local gentleman down at Clinton, Jim Rollo. And Mr. Rollo owned that airplane for probably 10 or 15 years, flew it daily. And uh, he put it up for sale and another local fella here, Lynn Prater, you know Lynn, he bought it for a year, then sold it to, to a fellow by the name of Harold Haskett. I told Harold to fly. He kept the airplane for three years. I bought it back from Harold, sold it back to Henry, and then Henry sold it back to me. So that was the history of that airplane. <laughs> All in a time span of 70 through, I'm on the airplane now for 10 years. Again, what, two, since 2001. This airplane, is a local airplane that, that was owned by a, a local barnstormer, Ed Robinson, and Ed had completely rebuilt this airplane from a basket case. And um, then uh, many years passed and Ed passed away and the family sold the airplane to um, uh, a local guy here by the name of Jimmy Cole. And Jimmy completely rebuilt the airplane, put it back to its original original uh, way because there used to be a window behind where this rear wind is here now and it was a pristine job. The airplane's been sitting here for probably a good 10 years or so and it would probably take more money to uh, redo this airplane than what it would be worth. Uh, but this is one of the 10,000 airplanes that, uh, that the champs uh, Built. What year was that one built? This one, Bert? I'd have to look at the serial yeah. number and run it, but most of the airplanes, uh, there were over 10,000 built between, what, 45 and 1948, so. Well, now, what's, uh, how much older is your airplane, or this airplane, than yours? You know? I, I don't know. I'd have to look at the serial yeah. number. Okay. Uh, but, but basically, the airplanes are the same. I mean, it's the same, same basic airplane. Um, Many of these airplanes uh, still being flown today. One reason for that, they are considered a light sport aircraft, LSA. And uh, you don't have to have a uh, physical, uh, flight physical, to be able to fly one because it falls under a certain weight and certain amount of uh, speed and so forth. But um, it's a shame, as you can see, the airplanes pretty well a derelict now. Uh, 
you can, as you can see, the propeller is missing. And also, if you look inside here, there's there's no cylinders, no jugs as we call them. And uh, it, it's a shame because you know, and, and deteriorate. And of course, the hardest thing on these airplanes, since they are fabric covered, you can hear that as fabric, is that the sun really. Uh, and the UV really uh, eats away. You can see where the birds have been in here and crapped on it and so forth. And you might, uh, an interesting thing here, you see the uh, little thing here, goof, goofy? Well, Ed Robinson was a uh, an artist for Walt Disney back during the wartime. And he drew uh, goofy and a lot of the cartoons of Pluto and all so forth and so on and so Jimmy evidently found that because I believe he called this airplane the goof. Now how long have you managed this airport Bert? Well actually and we're going out on the on the runway now in his vehicle. Yeah make sure you look down your way there Frank you yeah. don't see any traffic. No I don't see anything coming okay. Bert. I actually was approached by one of the county commissioners in 1966 to fill in temporarily until they found an airport manager. Well, I've been here ever since. I was actually too young to get a contract at the time, so I had to wait till I turned 21 to get a contract. So now I am still the airport operator and the, uh, or the airport manager and the fixed space operator. But as you can tell, we got a beautiful airport here. The runway was just extended back in 2000 and five to an additional 500 feet of runway but when we did that we also extended the runoffs on each end by 300 feet. As you can see we have a very nice runway and a good view of the, of the mountains. Now we're looking up the other end, runway 5 looking northeast and again more mountains. Another interesting thing I want to tell you, it just, it just reminded me when I was looking at this okay. airplane in the weeds, there was a fellow by the name of Ralph Claiborne. Right. Great guy. Had one of these um, in, in 19... He lived up the valley. Well, up the valley. Yeah. In 1962 or three, the airplane, the fabric had deteriorated. It didn't have this uh, 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 seconite on it. It had a cotton or a linen and it did not pass the inspection for punch test for the fabric. So he parked the airplane in a hangar that he built up on, a, on his farm. That airplane is still sitting in that, in that little really? thing, but it's the same way, it has deteriorated. Right. And at that time, probably could have spent seven or eight hundred dollars on it and had it totally recovered. Uh, this airplane, brand new, when it came out, out on the market, was $2,200. And now, one of these in, in decent shape will bring 20, and one in pristine shape will probably bring 35,000. How long have you been flying, Bert? I soloed August 11th, 1962. What type of aircraft do you fly? Ron Kachem. And that's, that's what, what you I learned to fly. Yeah, but yeah. you were flying what, a French Falcon? Oh, when I retired, yes, yeah. uh, a Falcon jet. Falcon? Falcon 20. Falcon 20. Yeah. A lot, lot of difference. This is this is stick and rudder, and, and right. of course the jet is more as a you're a monitor, right? A going fast monitor. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Bert. You're welcome. Bert and I've been friends for long well, time. Yeah, I've known you ever since you were a little guy. I, I've known him since his kids were that tall, <laughs> <laughs> and now they're this tall. <laughs>